Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Cardboard Dragon Reviews, the video review series designed to teach you a board game as if you're sitting at the table with me, as well as to provide a review on that game to help you decide if it's right for you. Today we're taking a look at Mars Attacks the Dice Game, which is a fairly simple dice rolling press your luck style game for 3-6 to six players ages 10 and up and takes around 20 minutes to play. So a lot of us are familiar with Mars Attacks from a movie released in the 1990s, but Mars Attacks has actually been around uh, since the 60s. It was originally a trading card series from Topps, uh, in which Martians are coming to Earth to try and take over the planet, and there are the humans, of course, try and fight back and resist them. Uh, in this game, interestingly, we play as the Martians who are trying to take over um, various cities uh, in Earth, or on Earth, I should say. And we do that through the rolling of dice. Um, and we can keep trying to press the attack on the humans, but we have to be careful that we don't roll too many nuke symbols, which represent the humans attacking us, or we might nuke out and not be able to claim these cities. Uh, once you successfully attack the city, you get a number of points in the upper corner. And when one of these uh, piles of cards runs out, the game is over, and the player with the most points collected through their uh, conquered cities wins the game. So let's go ahead and let's teach you how to play Mars Attacks the Dice Game. All right, so let's go ahead and teach you how to play Mars Attacks the Dice Game. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is each player needs to take four of uh, these Martian tokens in their color. And they need to keep them uh, with themselves for now. The next thing you need to do is take a look at um, this card here. the double-sided card. And this is the difficulty card. So you need to select which side you want to play on. Uh, this side has two nuke symbols. This is the easy side. And then we have um, the side with only one nuke symbol. That's the hard side. Uh, I almost always play on the hard difficulty in this game, so let's do that. Also need to determine uh, a starting player randomly, so they need to take this uh, blue token and keep it with them for the rest of the game. We then need to deal out uh, the cards into an array here, and the way we do that is there are always four stacks of cards that are going to be dealt out, but the number of cards in that those stacks are equal to the number of players in the game. So we have a three player game set up right here. So we're going to be dealing out four stacks of three cards each. And we flip over the top card in the stacks. And then our last stack. And I'm just going to move these over here just for ease of uh, view. So at this point we're ready to start playing. Uh, let's take a look at our dice though. We have 10 of them and there are three symbols on the dice equally distributed uh, across the dice. So we have first here Martian heads. We have ray guns. And then we have nuke symbols. Um, and again, there's two Martian heads on each dice, two nuke symbols, and two ray guns. So the first thing we need to do is decide which of these cities we want to attack. And how we decide that um, is up to us. We get to pick which one of the four locations we want to attack. We never attack this difficulty card. Um, so cards are worth a number of points listed in their top corner here. So that's one thing we might take into consideration. Some of them also have special abilities they might give you. Like some of them might let you take an extra turn or re-roll certain dice. Um, but what we're trying to do is essentially match the symbols uh, that are listed on the cards here. So Jacksonville here, it shows ray guns. And it wants you to have seven ray guns for you to be able to conquer Jacksonville. So this is actually the city we're going to try and attack. Let's go ahead and go there. Uh, you only get to attack one city on a turn. Ever. And 
let me clarify this right now. When you conquer a city, your turn is over. You can never conquer more than one city on a turn, even if you have extra dice you could use. So we can only attack one city on a turn. We're going to hit Jacksonville now. So we roll all 10 of our dice. Okay, so the first thing we do is we take a look at our nuke symbols and we compare them to the nuke symbols that are on the cards here. So on the cards, we have one, two, three, four, five, six nuke symbols in the corners. That's where we look for the nuke symbols. This card has nuke symbols in the middle. We don't care about those. Only these colored ones in the corner. There are six of them here. So essentially what that means is I can roll five nuke symbols and be okay. If I roll six, which would fill up all the nuke spots on these cards, my turn would be over and I would get nothing for that turn. So when you're starting playing, if you want, you can actually just physically set the dice on these spots on the cards. Um, so now I can see there are a room for four more nukes on the cards, but again, if I fill up the cards or exceed their capacity, um, then my turn will be over. So I can take three more nukes. And you also see a roll three ray guns here. Ray guns and nukes can never be re-rolled. However, as long as you keep rolling these Martian heads, you can keep re-rolling them. So here I have five Martian heads. If I want, I can re-roll them. So why would I? Why wouldn't I want to? So Jacksonville here has seven ray guns at once. I have three. At any point in my turn, I can say, you know, I'm afraid I'm going to roll too many nuke symbols, which is nuking out or busting and that way I wouldn't get any points so if I I could say you know what I'm afraid I'm going to roll too many nuke symbols so I'm going to stop here and bank my points in this instance I could stop and bank my points I have three ray guns this card wants ray guns so I could bank on three and then it would be the next player's turn now essentially what this means is next time that I come to attack Jacksonville I only need to roll one, two, three, four more ray guns to conquer Jacksonville instead of the initial seven. However, I might not want to do that, and I, I might want to press my luck and try and roll some more here. So I got two more ray guns, I got another nuke, and I got more Martian heads. So as long as I keep rolling Martian heads, I can keep re-rolling. So I could try and roll the Martian heads again, but again, if both of these turn up nukes, I'm going to nuke out, or actually that's not true, I am actually safe from nuking out because there's a slot here for a dice and a slot here for a dice, and then there's still one that would require a dice for me to nuke out, but I don't have enough dice where I could possibly nuke out, so I freely re-roll and that would be uh, my turn here. So I didn't nuke out, so I get to just score my points now. Six, so I would mark six. So next time I come back to Jacksonville, I only need one ray gun to claim it. Now, if I had the three ray guns and this is what I re-rolled, I would nuke out. Because and that filled up and I still have more dice too. Um, so I've rolled too many nukes, I've nuked out, I don't get to score any points on my card. And then it would be the next player's turn. However, when you bank your points, those are almost always safe. If you nuke out, you don't lose them. Uh, the reason I say almost always is there are some cards that will let you either move the number ahead or possibly even backwards. Um, so... Generally, bank your points is a safe play, and you'll always have those points there um, for you to build off of later. So, let's say I ended up banking five points there. Then I pass the dice, and it's now the purple's player, purple player's turn. So, purple can choose anywhere they want to attack, including trying to take Jacksonville. So they can essentially sweep this card out from under my feet and I am uh, helpless 
in that. So let's say on their turn they rolled the seven ray guns and didn't nuke out. Jacksonville wants seven ray guns. As soon as you satisfy the requirements of a card for however many symbols they want, you take this card. If there are other players' tokens on them, they go back, they get nothing, and you keep this card with you and you score that many points. This is uh, public information. People can see how many points you have, but this is yours to score at the end of the game. And then we would flip the next card here. Now, remember, you can only take one city at a time. You don't get to use extra dice for anything. You don't get to attack again. You can only conquer one city and attack one city on a turn. Like, for instance, let's say we rolled all ten were ray guns. Jacksonville only needed seven. That's great. We use a seven for Jacksonville, and our turn is over. We don't get to do anything with these extra three ray guns. So that's basically how the game works um some cards have special abilities at the bottom like some might let you take an extra turn when you get them or some might have ongoing effects like letting you re-roll um but there are a couple other types of cards that we're going to take a look at um, the second kind of most common type of card are these monument cards so here we have the statue of liberty we can see it's worth a lot of points, 15, versus the Jacksonville we just took was only 5. But we can see there are no ray gun symbols here. This card wants Martian heads. And remember, Martian heads are the only dice you can re-roll. So essentially, when you attack a monument, you roll the dice. And as long as you don't nuke out, you mark your score on however many Martian heads you rolled. Now, you could re-roll these Martian heads, but there's no point because this card wants you to have Martian heads. So we would mark here five Martian heads. And that would be our entire turn because you can't re-roll ray guns and we can't re-roll nukes if we had rolled any. And then we would pass the dice along and we could come back later to the Statue of Liberty. Now, let me clarify. You don't have to go attack the same place over and over again. If I attack Statue of Liberty on this turn and it comes back around to me, I don't have to go attack the Statue of Liberty again. I could come and attack Dallas and try and kind of spread myself out across the board. So that's how monuments work. And then I wanted to talk to you about this one card here, which seems to bring up a lot of confusion, and I think rightly so. This is Los Angeles, and you see Los Angeles here, has nuke symbols, which is very different. There's one other card, I think, in the game that has nuke symbols. But what Los Angeles says at the bottom, you must roll nukes to claim Los Angeles. The normal rules for getting nuked still apply. The nuke symbols shown in the numbered spaces do not apply towards getting nuked. So what they're talking about, the numbered spaces, are these uh, 12 listed here. Those aren't spots, extra spots, when you're calculating... Uh, how many dice you can afford to have nuke symbols on. So, how you attack Los Angeles is you roll the dice. <laughs> this is terrible. We'll just keep re-rolling our Martians in there. We don't have any more re-rolls, so that's fine. So... You calculate on the cards how many nuke symbols you're allowed to have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we could have a maximum of six. Here we have four. As long as you don't roll uh, nuke out as per normal, you score on Los Angeles the number of nukes you have. So you want to roll less than the value that would nuke you out. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can have six nukes and score Los Angeles. So ideally we would roll six nukes. But here we only rolled four and we're still under the nuke limit. We have no more rerolls so we will score four points on Los Angeles. Then we can come back to it later. Now if we had rolled you know eight nukes that's too many on the board we would nuke out. We wouldn't score any points on Los Angeles because we nuked out. So the best we could do with the numbers that we have here are six nukes. So we could the most points we could score in Los Angeles right now 
given the way the cards are, is six points. And then we could come back to it later. So that's a bit of a confusing card. There's a Las Vegas card that um, you just get to score a point onto it when you nuke out. Uh, you can't attack it directly. So the text, except for Los Angeles, the text at the bottom of the card very clearly explains the special abilities and stuff. So you'll be fine uh, reading those on your own. But I just want to cover this Los Angeles because it, it's kind of confusing for people. Um, so that's, that's about it for Mars Attacks a Dice Game. Uh, the game ends when one of these piles of cards has entirely been conquered. Now, if you played zombie dice, the end game is very similar. So let's say I take... Um, this is a bad card just because of its special ability. Let's say that Dallas was here. I took Dallas. That ended began the end of the game because one of the piles is empty. I'm the starting player. So everybody needs to have an equal number of turns in this game. So because I'm the starting player... Purple and yellow would each get a turn, and then the game would end. Now, if it was purple who bought this, or conquered it, and I was still me, the starting player, it's only yellow gets to go again. So you basically finish out a complete round of the table. And if it was yellow who bought this, that would be the end of the game because that completes a complete uh, rotation. Everybody has the same number of turns for the game. Um, and then at that point, you add up the number of uh, victory points you have. And whoever has the most uh, wins Mars Attacks the Dice Game. And sorry, just wanted to add here, if there happens to be a tie between players... Uh, it's the person who has the most cities uh, conquered who wins. And then if there's still a tie at the end of that, it's the person who is in later turn order um, who would win the game. So in this case, if purple and yellow happen to be tied, then it would be yellow who... And they both had the same number of cities as well, then it would be yellow who would win because they're last in turn order. So let me go ahead and give you my review of Mars Attacks the Dice Game. Hey everybody, I'm just here to give my review of Mars Attacks the Dice game. Uh, this game is is okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, there's nothing broken with it, but it doesn't really do anything um, to really make itself stand out, at least not to me anyway. Um, the closest it gets is with these kind of special abilities that some of the cards have, but even then it's, you know, fairly standard, light, press your luck style game. Even though I say that it's a press your luck style game, I've had instances in this game where you can't even press your luck. You know, you'll notice cards like Denver have no nuke symbols, and if you have a few of those out at a time, you, you might have a limit of three or four nukes on the board, which is crazy. And nobody will even be able to get their rolls going because uh, you just nuke out in your first roll. You don't even get a chance to press your luck because you can't even make. Like right there, oh, well, that's a terrible roll, but you can't even get started um, because you've nuked out without a chance to even press your luck. Um, I mean, I like the art in this game. I like the theme. I think it's pretty cool. might be a little grotesque for some people, but I enjoy it. Um, and it's an inexpen inexpensive game, and it's light and quick, so you can teach it to just about anybody. Um, but the main problem with the game is it's just not, you know, it doesn't stand out. So, I give this game a 6 out of 10. It's okay, there's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't bring itself to that next level of um, something that you need to have. Uh, if you have other light games, like, you know, if you already own something like Zombie Dice, for instance, I don't know if you need to have this game, because it has a very similar feel to it, and... It doesn't really do anything that drastically different that makes it feel all that different. I mean, the player interaction of going for the different spots is kind of neat. But again, it's not enough to really make itself stand out. It's an okay game. And in 2015, with so many awesome games coming out, okay doesn't really cut it anymore. So... I kind of recommend this game if you like the theme and if you're looking for 
a light game, a light, quick, easy game. Um, but if you already have a bunch of those, I don't really think this game is necessary for you because it'll probably just be a redundancy in your collection. So anyway, those are my thoughts on Mars Attacks a Dice Game from Steve Jackson Games. Um, you know, I enjoy it. It's okay, but again, uh, 2015, okay, might not be good enough depending on how many other similar style games you have in your collection. Cool theme though, love the art. Uh, and this has been Chris for Cardboard Dragon Reviews, and until next time, keep your dice on the table.